let's get in to the 50 90 release details that were just leaked out so hopefully this will be pretty cool let's get into it nvidia rtx 5090 release details are just tipped by leaker and it could be heavily influenced by amd's rdna 4 which is really interesting rtx 40 series of graphics cars launched at the tail end of 2022 and they're not exactly long in the tooth plenty of pc gamers are wondering when the next generation blackwell cards will launch now, the hardware-focused YouTuber Moore's Law is Dead has a word from a source at NVIDIA that the final decision may hinge on GPU rival AMD. Blackwell is being prepared to be ready to launch in Q4 of 2024 if we want it to, the source is quoted as saying, italicized emphasis courtesy of Moore Laws is Dead. That would be pretty quick. And that timing would be another disaster. Really, this timing from the cryptocurrency mining perspective will be the same disaster that we saw with the RTX 3000 series. If the traditional halving cycle goes through and we start to see that pump up in, in December of 24 and we get a Q4 launch of the 40 series which now if they say if they really are if this leak is true and they're prepped and could launch in 2024 q4 and we see a bull run cycle that starts decreasing the av availability of gpus even further i would not doubt that we would see nvidia launch this right at that time to just stuff the market more with higher priced gpus as they did with the RTX 3000 series and maybe even a resurgence of light hash rate models as well. This could end up being the exact same repeat damn disaster that we saw with the RTX 3000 series. I certainly hope not, but it definitely feels like that's a possibility with this leaked information. Whether or not we do depends on how ADA RTX 40 series card sales are doing and how competitive we believe RDNA 4 will be during the holiday shopping season. And the thing is, is like, like I said, it's going to be super competitive. We're already seeing GPU mining resurgence right now as we speak. And we're not even close to the typical bull run cycle. So post April, once this starts going into FOMO and we see euphoria, it's a very high likelihood that we start to see uh, availability of GPUs just get smashed and it doesn't even matter if RDNA 4 is competitive or not. Remember, we still had shortages of RX 6000 series GPUs during that time as well, which were not performing as well as the 30 series in the gaming applications and even in mining to some extent with you know the exception of models like the 6600 being extremely efficient this was kind of the case with amd's rdna4 rumored to be targeting the mid-range segment of the market is not clear on how much of a threat it will actually pose to nvidia's high-end products but assuming the quote is legitimate it uh, sounds like the company is aiming to keep its options open even if NVIDIA decides to hold off in 2024, it doesn't sound like gamers will have too long to wait. However, however, there we go. I did that wrong. But no matter what, we are currently planning to make a big deal about the RTX 5000 efficiency at CES 2025, the source continued. Given CES, the Consumer Electronics Show, is held in January every year, it sounds like the RTX 50 series cards will arrive in the first quarter of 2025 at the latest, assuming those plans don't change. The source also gave some clues about the raw power of the Blackwell architecture. Quote, as for performance, Blackwell's rasterization uplift over ADA will be an, as impressive as Ampere to ADA RTX 40, which really wasn't that much if you ask me, at least most people that I talked to about this. However, the RTX 4090 was cut down by more than 10%, so it's plausible we could make the 5090 feel like a similar uplift if we felt threatened. That might feel a little disappointing given the RTX 40 launch was a touch underwhelming. 
But as our sister site TechRadar points out, consumer graphics cards probably won't be NVIDIA's bread and butter for too much longer, thanks to the generative AI boom. Demand for NVIDIA Silicon is far more profitable sector that has gone through the roof. If the current AI gold rush isn't a false dawn, that could mean NVIDIA completely pivots away from gaming in the next few years. So perhaps we should just be grateful that there's a roadmap for the RTX 5090 at all, even if ultimately it isn't the giant graphical leap forward the gamers dream of. Now, from the mining perspective, it's going to get expensive. I mean, it, it really could get extremely expensive for GPU miners if we really get into the AI sphere, right, with 5090s and 4090s getting bought up by AI farm or AI farms, for lack of a better term, by crypto mining farms and by gamers, it could be that we end up in a position at the end of 2024 where, you know, better luck next cycle because you aren't buying any GPUs, dude. That's pretty much, you got about probably a year right now to purchase GPUs and then your SOL. And that is a real concern that I have right now. That's why I, I'm stacking up GPUs with everything that I can absolutely pull together because with, with this AI aspect getting rolled in and it doesn't look like it's going anywhere, right? That's the other thing. AI doesn't look like it's going anywhere anytime soon. And you talk about everything else with cryptocurrency mining in like, and then you got basically gamers here that are trying. Well, I, I feel like if you're a gamer, just buy a console at this point. Cause you're screwed. Uh, it, it's just going to be stupid. Like if you're, you know, uh, I, I don't know. Like I'm, I'm thinking back to like my twenties and, and doing PC gaming and playing world of Warcraft. Like there's no way I'm buying even an entry level or like I used to buy the 26 or, you know, basically the equivalent of the 2060, like a 90, uh, a 960 or whatever that may be uh, back in those days or 760, right? Uh, 560, that, that class of GPUs, those are getting so ridiculously expensive that you're basically purchasing a console for the price of just the graphics card. And the graphics card isn't even like that much better than they than it used to be so it, it's getting a little ridiculous well we'll have to see where it goes but what do you guys think are there going to be any gpus available come 2025 or do we see another apocalypse of the gpu space and no availability well and then we'll just start to see ps5 pros get modified for cryptocurrency mining <laughs> On another note, we have basically pricing for the Super Series from RTX 40 Super Series. And the pricing rumors look uh, as expected. I don't think that there's really anything here that is um, surprising. I'll let you take a look at that while I take a sip here. But we're looking at the RTX 4080 Super being $999 on launch. 4070 Ti Super being $799. And the 4070 Super being 599. Reliable source mega size GPU has disclosed the expected pricing details for the upcoming RTX 40 Super series. Given the consistent accuracy of this leaker's information in the past, it can be considered trustworthy. It's worth noting that the revealed pricing also aligns with the data shared by Moore's Law is Dead, once again, a reliable source for leaks. As per Mega Size GPU's post, the RTX 4080 Super is expected to be priced at $999, marking a $200 reduction compared to the 4080 Non Super when it was initially launched over a year ago. This particular SKU exhibits the most significant price adjustment with the Super Series, despite displaying comparatively modest improvements in the specs. Meanwhile, the 4070 Ti Super is rumored to be priced at $799, mirroring the exact MSRP of the non-Super card at its launch precisely one year ago. Additionally, the RTX 4070 Super is slated to take the place of the non-Super version at a $599 price point, strongly suggesting an impending price reduction for the latter.
If the previous speculations hold true, both the 4080S and the 4070 TIS are expected to replace existing SKUs, while the RTX 4070S is anticipated to coexist with the current model in the market. NVIDIA has no intention to officially price cut existing models, at least officially, which seems absolutely ridiculous to me for the RTX 4080 pricing structure, but at the same time, if they are seeing the trends that I'm seeing, I think they feel like they have nothing to fear, and they're probably right, per the discussion we just had. If the previous speculations hold true, yeah, so we got that. Whether the new information is correct, we should learn soon enough. Now, here's some specifications for these. And unfortunately, we aren't seeing a huge improvement on the memory side of things. However, on the core side of things, we are seeing some improvements. I, I should be careful with that. We are getting a bandwidth boost um, with the 4080 Super, though, only going up about 24 five or 20 was that 24 not even not even 20 i'm doing i'm doing that wrong i'm doing that wrong right yeah 19 gigabit gigabytes per second uh on the bandwidth so from a memory perspective nothing great there i think the interesting one you really want to look at is this boost up on the rtx 4070 ti uh, which is going up from 504 gigabytes per second to 672 gigabytes per second at 285 watts. This means we'll have basically from an ET hash perspective, I mean, we will be looking at around 100 mega hash per second. And that means that, you know, on the Ergo Autolicos V2 side of things for the memory performance, we'll be looking at like, 200 mega hash per second and it's staying at the same tdp so these things could be killer for mining memory intensive algorithms i think obviously the biggest one that we would talk about would be rutherium now renamed to hypra with et hash b3 and the 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 absence of asics and fpga on the network and the adoption of shanghai and its recent price increase ethereum would look really good or hyper i should say would look really good on these gpus potentially and that is because we're getting a 256 bit bus instead of the 192 bit bus yeah <laughs> which is like at least we can pay less than $800 for a 256-bit bus on an NVIDIA GPU, which we have not seen in ages, uh, in ages. You know, I was really disappointed with the 4070 getting that 192-bit bus, especially coming off of the 3070. It was like, okay, we're getting faster memory, cool. But then you, you, you basically shrunk our bus and gave us a skinny old bitch. And I, I want the, I want the, I want the big one, you know? So we're getting a big bus on a, on a 4070. And although it will be a 4070 TI super, but the pricing is supposed to come in at a TI pricing. So I think, you know, Hey, that'll look good. As far as that's concerned, the 4070 though, uh, 4070 super still pretty disappointing. We're keeping the same memory bus. We're keeping the same uh, bandwidth. So not really good as far as that's concerned. And even then too, if we go back to talking about core clocks and really talking about, you know, are these things going to be better from the, you know, from the perspective of things like uh, spec mineable coins, blank three, you know, things that do eventually get FPGAs on them, things that are dual mineable, uh, whether that be a lithium, radiant, whatever it may be. Caspa is no longer, obviously, with the move to ASICs. But if we look at that perspective, we're only getting a 45 megahertz boost clock bump on the 4080 Super. Not that impressive. The 70 Ti Super versus the 70 Ti, not getting a huge bump there. But as that's on the on the the actual uh speed which is expected what we are getting though is a, a decent increase in the CUDA cores which should give us a decent improvement in essentially the performance on those jeep or on those algorithms at least presumably right so that's kind of what we're hoping for uh the 4070 super might be on those algorithms closer to what the 4070 Ti is now. And then 
on the uh, 4070 Ti Super. It's it's a little, I was hoping it would get closer to the 4080. Uh, it's not quite there, um, but you know, I think it makes up more than makes up for it on the memory bandwidth side of things. What do you guys think about the Super Refresh? Are you excited about it from the mining perspective? Are you planning on picking one up? If so, which one are you going to pick up? And what are you going to mine with it? Let me know in the live chat and the comment section below. Now, we have a little oddity here too, floating around from the RTX 30 series. And this one's kind of interesting. Uh, we have a 3050 coming out. But the interesting thing about the 3050 is we are getting six, six gigabytes of memory, um, albeit I believe it's at a pretty low, yeah, it's at 224 gigabytes per second, but that will be enough, you know, to load DAGs of most coins. The thing is, is I think it won't work. It won't work on Conflux, unfortunately. And I'd really, uh, I, I think you want eight gigabytes of memory to keep your door open to Conflux personally right? I think 1660 Supers, 1660 Ti's, anything with six gigabytes is kind of pushing the limit. Last cycle, it was four gigabytes, right? Like you wanted to have, you know, six gigabytes or more. This cycle, I really think you want eight gigabytes of memory or more to be in a good position to be able to bob and weave through all of the algorithms and their requirements. That being said, this is still a budget option. And if you're looking at just practicing you know, cryptocurrency mining, you want to put together a rig, load Hive OS on it and play with it, you know, hey, maybe not a bad option. We stumbled upon some specs of unreleased RTX 3050 gigabyte model. There's six gigabyte models, which we confronted with our sources and one of the NVIDIA board partners, Palit, is already planning its six gigabyte models, which should appear this quarter. At least three models are in the works. Uh, two of which are part of the Storm X series and one from the Calm X series. Now, the coolest one here that I think, <laughs> and I say that pun intended, is going to be the Palit with uh, basically fanless. And why that is awesome is, you know, from a, a, a Octo Miner perspective, if you're going to build out one of those, a server case perspective where you don't need fans, it reduces the amount of moving parts. It can stay cool. And, you know, uh, you you reduce replacements and their, their resale value is a little bit easier, at least in my humble opinion, because there aren't very many fanless options. And on top of that, you aren't going to have a bunch of broken fans to replace. Kind of nice as far as that's concerned. So there is that option. I like fanless. If I can ever get it, I do. Uh, that's kind of the way I go. I also strip a lot of the fans off of my GPUs. I used to not. And then basically all my fans started dying. And then I was trying to replace them all. And then I was like, well, crap. Now at this point, I have no resale. I got to replace all these damn fans. It's a pain in the butt. It's much better to, as soon as you get the GPU, if you're running Octo Miners server cases, my opinion, the best thing to do rip those fans off, throw them in the box, put that box to the side. When you're ready to resell it, bring that box out. You got a brand new fan shroud to throw on. The bearings will be brand new. It'll be like new. All you got to do is replace the thermal pad and the thermal paste and you're off to the races. It's going to sell better. It's going to look better. It's going to have less issues. It's just the way it is. That's what I do now. Um, is if I'm going to build one, the plan is pull the fan shroud off, throw it in the box, put it to the side, worry about it later. Among a few of the desktop GPUs, the Storm X model uses the actual physical PCIe 4.0 by 8 connector. Unlike most modern GPUs, it does not have a full-size 16-lane interface. Even on modern cards like the 4060 series, this full-size connector has no electrical uh, connections for half of the lanes. However, it may serve as a structural support for heavier designs. Apparently, the Storm X series may not need it. Now, speaking of the fanless model, it's worth mentioning that the last Calm X model was introduced almost four years ago, specifically the 1650 Calm X, released in February of 2020. 
Surprisingly, Pallet has not revi revisited their lineup with this fanless design since then. According to the 3050 specs above, the card may generate up to 115 watts of power, which seems quite high. The previous rumors indicated that the 3056 30, gigabyte may have only 70 watts of thermal design power, which would make a lot of sense considering, you know, the 1650 COMEX was at 75 watts. I'm hoping it's on the lower end of things because if it's really up there, higher at that, you know, basically that... Uh, 8 gigabyte, or sorry, not 8 gigabyte, but yeah, well, closer to the 8 gigabyte model, then it kind of makes it pointless. Speaking of which, by the way, there will be a 3050 8 gigabyte model, uh, and that's going to retail, though, at 249 USD. Uh, the 3050 6 gigabyte model is 179, and if you compare this to like an Intel Arc A750, which you can get for under $200 pretty reliably these days, it doesn't make sense to purchase either one of these, in my humble opinion. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about them at the end of the day. Uh, the only cool thing here, I think, is the, the fanless design on that one particular model. That's how I see it as far as this is concerned. Now, you guys mined during the bear market. You made it through. Well, at least maybe a half of you. I know a lot of you motherfuckers over here didn't actually do it, but the ones that did, I have a new shirt for you guys. And it says, I mined with the bears. For the bear market okay so if you mind with the bears and you want to rep that you did mind during the bear market go ahead and head on over to shop.sonofatech.com and the listing will be down below i'll put it in live chat right now i have a sweatshirt there's a sticker if you'd rather have a sticker t-shirt premium shirt all that cool cool stuff um, really like the new shirt. I ordered a few for myself and I just had that design finished this week. Eventually it'll be under on the YouTube channel, but that takes a little bit of time. So just give it some time. Uh, proceeds of course go to supporting me in the channel. So there you go. And I thought, uh, we put some work into it and I thought you guys might enjoy it. Thanks for watching this clip from the Crypto Mining Show. You can check out the full episode here and don't forget to subscribe down here as well. You can also check out my crypto mining e-course at sonofatech.com where you can get a free month of supporter status with a purchase at sonofatech.locals.com. Also, don't forget to check out my merch underneath the video or at shop.sonofatech.com. I'll see you next Tuesday.